Good morning. Good morning. Am I coming through with the microphone on the mic? Yeah? Okay. It's been a long time since I've actually been able to wear this. Um, so, first off, thank the merciful Lord that we're actually able to come together in person this morning. Oh. I'm also very thankful that my good morning was actually responded to with a good morning from the congregation. That's also, that's also been a while in making. And just because we have not been able to say it together, He is risen! He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed! Hallelujah! Ah! Oh. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> so before we begin the service, just uh, a few basic reminders. So uh, for the service, we have to keep face coverings on. Hopefully, as time continues, as we enter into new phases, we won't have to do this. But for now, face coverings on during the service. Uh, there won't be any singing allowed in the service. But you do have the lyrics in the hymnal. Oh, uh, sorry, in your uh, in your bulletin, so you can meditate on the words or even hum along as just as long as you're not singing. And uh, for communion, so liturgical north side, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be coming down the outside, and then there's an arrow, right with this uh, short pew bench, that points you to a green X, and then that's where you're supposed to be standing uh, before you can receive communion, because we're going to try and live stream, just because not every one of us can come back in person just yet. So, in order to have the camera for the screen, uh, we'll be coming alongside here. So please stay at that X until this person has communed, and then return to their seat. And then you can come, just to make sure that we have two meters distancing as we're coming for the communion. Right. So, I invite you to rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done under. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am happy. My heart exalts. And with my song I give thanks to him. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. O oh, save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. With peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God, God heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, your Son, Jesus, triumphed over the prince of demons and freed us from bondage to sin. Help us to stand firm against every assault of Satan and enable us always to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. The Old Testament reading for this Sunday is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 3. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray together Psalm 103. Out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, will you understand? But with you there is forgiveness. That you may be near I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in this word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, 
Hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love. And with him is plentiful redemption. And he will redeem Israel from, from all his enemies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now and will be forever. The epistle for this Sunday is taken from the second letter to the Corinthians, 4.13 to 5.1. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent which is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as we join together in the Alleluia and verse. Alleluia. Glory to to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again, so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebub, and by the prince of demons he casts out the demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Now, usually this would be where I would have a a children's message. At least, I was having a children's message in the online live stream service. Um, But since... I, I, I sense there are more children at heart here than than people of a specific age. So, rather than do a children's message, I'll I'll do a Bible basics type of message. So for today, I'll focus on what, well, I was originally thinking that I would do this for the sermon, talking about this particular subject, but I'll talk about, well, what is the eternal sin 
of blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Because if this is an eternal sin that has no forgiveness, just saying this might put you at ill ease. I mean, it's rather scary to think about there being a sin that you could never be forgiven. And even the hearts of the most pious Christians might wonder, well, have I done this? Have, have I done this secretly? And if you're wondering about that, I don't think you have. I mean, the eternal sin is not something so obvious, or, or something so common as, say, um, taking candy from a baby, or falling asleep during the sermon, or saying the eternal sin is falling asleep during the sermon, so people actually stay awake for once. Um, I, was, I was hoping for a bigger laugh, but oh well. <laughs> No, the eternal sin is actually a rejection of the Holy Spirit and all the gifts that he offers to us. So, the Pharisees, who were watching Jesus cast out demons, well, they were saying, well, look at this good and marvelous thing that Jesus Christ is doing. Because Jesus Christ is freeing these people from demons. So they are no longer possessed. They are now free and living in, uh, living in uh, uh, faith with God. So this is a good and pious work of Jesus Christ. But the Pharisees are looking at this, seeing the good work of Jesus, and declaring, this must be a work of Satan. So the Pharisees are taking the good and lovely gifts of Jesus Christ, given to the people by way of the Holy Spirit, and saying that these things must be evil. So the unforgivable sin, which these Pharisees are themselves professing, is not something that you can mistakenly stumble into. It is the rejection of the Holy Spirit knowing the truth of what the Holy Spirit does for you. So this would be uh, similar to if somebody comes up here to be baptized, they receive the Holy Spirit, they're made a child of God, then you're going... But baptism is a tool of the devil. That would be a sin of the Holy Spirit because in baptism, holy baptism, the Holy Spirit is making somebody new, forgiving their sins. But if you're denying the God-given truth of these things and saying that only evil is being offered by this obviously good thing, that is the sin of the... that is the eternal sin. So... Take heart. If you're wondering, have I committed the eternal sin? You have not actually committed it. Because people who have committed the eternal sin, they have separated themselves from God and they would not actually be worried about this. If you are feeling what we call contrition, if you are feeling bad about your sin, if you want to confess your sin, this is actually good. This is proof that the Holy Spirit is working within you, driving you to repentance and driving you to the forgiveness of Christ. And it's not as though the eternal sin can never be forgiven in the sense that uh, if you repent of the eternal sin, if you say that, oh, I was wrong, and I, I actually do recognize, say, baptism as a work of the Holy Spirit, it's not as though you can't turn away from it. But as long as you're holding to that eternal sin, you will be judged for it and come into judgment eternally. So there are people who once denied the good and, and uh, lovely works of the Holy Spirit done among us, and they have actually come into the faith afterwards. So it's not that they're coming in with a false faith, they're coming in with a true faith, now they're coming in with the Holy Spirit, working in them the love and forgiveness of Christ. So, when we're thinking about these things, and even thinking, well, have I sinned, have I done wrong, and coming to confession, just as we did at the beginning of the service. This is a good and lovely work that the Holy Spirit does within us. And yes, we feel horrible for sinning. We feel horrible for going against the will of our Lord. But, that is a good thing because it drives you to the love and forgiveness of Christ, who casts out fear, because perfect love 
which we received from Christ by way of the Holy Spirit, cast out all fear. Amen. Let us listen to the instrumental music of our hymn, Holy Spirit, Light Divine. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you in the name of God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for meditation comes from Psalm 130, verses 5 to 7. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord. More than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. We have been waiting, waiting for what seems to be far too long. We have waited for our church to reopen. We are waiting for our struggle with COVID to finally end, and we wait for our Lord to give us plentiful redemption, as Psalm 130 says. You know, this first in-person service, this is the first in-person service within these walls that has hosted more than a household bubble in over six months. I still recall leading a prayer service right here on November 19th, when the restriction upon corporate worship was enacted. I was the only one in the building, and anyone who joined me in that service had to be online. And back then, the liturgical color was green, because the same season in the church year we entered into just this Sunday 
was the same church season when the restrictions came into effect in November 2020. This means every change in color you would normally see on the parents and on my stoles, all of them came and went since the last time we were able to come together here. So, Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, and Easter all pass by without us being together in Hope Lutheran Church. But we still had hope. The church is not a building, but the body of Christ united in fellowship. Everyone redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ is a member of his body and given the hope of life everlasting. We were separated by distance and lost a lot of time which could have been spent together. But Hope Lutheran Church was always united in Christ. We simply had to wait in hope to be united once more with one another. And after so much hopeful waiting, your soul can rejoice in being in the presence of one another here to praise the Lord. To be united in worship once again is a grace our God has given to us. We have prayed for this, and many more outside our congregation have prayed for this as well. Our prayers for the reopening of Hope Lutheran Church and all God's churches in British Columbia have been joined with the prayers of many others who have prayed for our sake. Thank the merciful Lord that he has given us so much support in this time of difficulty from his church. And not only has our God given us the blessing of so many good and faithful people, but he has also strengthened and preserved us through his regular offering of grace through his word. Part of the daily bread we ask for in the Lord's Prayer is the daily reception of God's Word because the Word of God is the food which nourishes our soul. It is through the words of Christ that we have eternal life. We even said so in the Alleluia and verse. Our souls can forever wait in hope for the fulfillment of the Lord's promises because He daily feeds us with the bread of his word, which gives unto us eternal life. We feast on God's word together this morning, but we should also be mindful of those who are unable to join us in this building, unable to join even the lifting of the restriction of indoor worship. Sadly, some of us at Hope Lutheran Church are not yet able to enter this building to feed on the feasts of God's Word and Sacrament. Health concerns and other issues still linger about people who remain vulnerable to infection. And this is why we thank and praise God for the blessing of technology to reach them in their homes, delivering to them the Word of God online. So, the long wait for reopening of church services has ended, But the hope for an end to the COVID problem still continues. Part of the struggle is evident to us in the service, since we do not have everyone back. And also, as we still have to deal with with masks, with distancing, with sanitizing. And I will well admit that pre-registration can be a pain. Even so, I thank the Lord that all of us can join here together, thanking and praising our Lord side by side, united in the life of Christ. Hopeful waiting with all these extra protocols is a small price to pay for us to wait together at Hope Lutheran. 
For now, we do wait. As long as there are people still in need of protection from the coronavirus, it is our God-given duty to wait for them, taking the proper precautions to ensure a safe environment. And this means various precautions like face coverings, hand sanitizer, will be around for at least a few more months. You might be sick of it. I know I'm sick of it. But we wait for an end to these things in hope. We hope not as those who are placing all their faith in this world, but those who have faith in God to work within this world. Things of this world, well, they creak, break, and waste away. They do not offer eternal promises like our Lord does. Our true hope cannot lie in things that waste away, because they just don't last. Our true hope, the lasting hope you have, is in the one who renews you day by day. You are daily sustained by our Lord through his grace given to you. God's steadfast love uplifts your souls and allows them to wait in patience. This is why staying in the word of God and the sacraments is so important. Because it is through these things that God promises to you an offering of life and forgiveness. Your hope is in the Lord, for it is in him you have steadfast love and salvation from the evils of this world. The present waiting for an end to COVID, an end to numerous extra precautions, is coming. If you were to check what people say on the news or social media, they would actually ascribe this deliverance of humanity from the coronavirus solely to scientific achievement or uh, personal actions. But although science has indeed played a central role in how we have eluded many infections and deaths, we thank and praise our Lord for calling people to work in laboratories, for directing people in government to do their best for the people, and for being with people as they make daily sacrifices to slow the spread of the virus. The Lord works in this world by calling us to serve our neighbors just as he always has. In truth, everyone whom the Lord called to do his work, well, they haven't done so perfectly. You might have some criticisms of politicians and scientists yourself, but God has always worked through sinners to bring about good. We thank our Lord for guiding people to help remove COVID as a serious threat, while also thanking our Lord for steadfastly remaining with us while we wait for COVID to be over. The steadfast love of the Lord remains with us while we wait for an end, an end to disappointment and an end to struggle. A daily gift he offers to us is his word, which nourishes the soul. Eternal life comes through the word of God, which creates faith and life within you now. It is by the word you are drawn out of death and into new life. You sin daily, and the Lord forgives you daily. The forgiveness and life that Jesus won for you at the cross strengthens and preserves you every day of your life. The word of God, which declares you righteous, applies the forgiveness of Jesus to you right here and now. Your soul waits for the Lord, and his word gives you hope. This is the kind of waiting that Psalm 130 talks about. Your soul waits for the Lord, and you hope in his word, because he gives to you plentiful redemption, forgiveness. You wait for the Lord because the hope of eternal life is in you. You wait for when the Lord will bring an end to the weariness of this world, 
where you have to deal with things like COVID. You wait to enter into the paradise of our God, fully cleansed of sin and clothed with immortality. This comes to you at the end of the age when Jesus returns. But the hope and promise of these things dwells within you now. Even though we wait for the fullness of the world to come, the hope of these things, the eternal hope, the imperishable hope, the hope that cannot die because it is in the life of Christ, this dwells within you. Until we enter into the paradise of our Lord, until the last day, well, we have crises that pop up all the time in this world. But our God remains by your side to love and care for you, even still. Waiting for the Lord is not always an easy task. Waiting for an in-person worship service to return was certainly difficult, since we had to go without each other's company, without each other's fellowship, and we had no idea how long we actually had to wait. But we had the promise of God that we would absolutely worship in each other's company once more. Worshiping together in this world or even in the next. Some of our members in this congregation have died during the restrictions. We cannot worship with them in this building right now. But we merely have to wait in hope. A wait that leads us to the resurrection in Jesus Christ, a wait to the last day when Jesus raises from the grave all Christian believers so that we may worship side by side once again. We wait in hope to see all our brothers and sisters we have lost in the faith once more. It is not an easy wait, since we wait without them and we don't know how long we have to wait. But God gives to us the hope and promise that all those in the faith will be raised from their graves to see each other in the flesh once more. Waiting in a world of hardship is difficult, but we wait as those who have hope. This, too, is a word from God which nourishes our soul. While your soul waits here on earth for the Lord to fulfill his word of promise, the hope of these promises dwells within you. We still have the aches and pains of the world, even wars and plagues. But the day is coming when these too will cease. The Lord is steadfast and faithful. His love is with us always as we wait in a promise that will never fade away. Although your outer nature is wasting away, your inner nature is being renewed day by day. Renewed through the word and sacrament we receive. So, Hope Lutheran Church, have hope in the Lord as he upholds you with forgiveness and renews your spirit daily, awaiting him to bring you into the life to come. Amen. A word that's a, a hope that surpasses all understanding, guard and preserve you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I invite you to rise as we confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed.
I am created in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, fair God of fair God, begotten of God, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was inspired by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under conscious time. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. We've received a number of prayer requests. So in our prayers today, we'll be, be remembering um, uh, missions, Lutheran Church Canada's missions, uh, specifically uh, one of the individuals in there, and for the month of June, we'll be praying for various um, pastors in our synod who are going out on mission. There's also Pastor Les Carlson, who recently recovered from a heart attack, so we're going to be praying for Thanksgiving for recovery. Um, they're also going to be praying for the families of those who lost uh, people in residential schools. We're also going to be praying for the communities which have lost these children. Um, also, uh, we'll be praying in memory of uh, the D-Day war effort, since this is the 75th anniversary of that conflict. Okay. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us. Enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as your Son sent forth his church to make disciples in all nations. We lift up before you, Reverend M. L. Smith, asking you to sustain him as Lutheran Church Canada's Executive Director of Missions, sustaining him by your Holy Spirit and blessing his labors for the sake of the for the sake of your holy gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in whose keeping we trust all our loved ones, help us to look to you in times of sorrow, remembering the cloud of faithful witnesses which, with which we are surrounded. We pray, O oh Lord, that you be with those who are suffering the emotional backlash of finding the graves of the children lost in the residential schools. Please, please, Lord, be with those who grieve. Comfort them in their sorrow. And give to them a love that can only be found in your gospel. Grant that they, like we, may one day share the joys of those who now rest in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and gracious.
gracious God, we give thanks that you have restored the health of your servant, Pastor Les Carlson. And for this blessing, we praise your name. Grant that he may continue joyfully through the days you have given him in this world, and also share in eternal glory at the appearing of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we are mindful of the sorrows of the past, past wars such as World War II. We thank you for looking after your servants in the D-Day attack. And we pray, O oh Lord, that those who are remembering this event, that they do so in good faith, looking to those who have lost, lost loved ones, that you may comfort them. And that we learn from all these past horrors that they never that they may never be repeated. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need sickness or adversity. Especially we name Margaret, Hildegard, Gail, Judith, Erica, Evelyn, Alma, Jean. Bruce, Laura, David, Richard, Martina, Linnea, Wilfred, and all those we name in our hearts now. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow, and grant to all the measure of your love taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in the offering. What shall, what shall I render, render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and the law in the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and the law in the name of the Lord. I will give my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the course of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh, was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead, put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God, our God, and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, he received his salvation accomplished for us by the all abandoned sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gather in the name of the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, in the end of the year, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb of his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Please be seated. Before we end, exit the sanctuary, uh, just a few brief things that I'd like to touch upon. Um, so in the bulletin, there are the usual indoor services safety procedures. So uh, make sure that you've pre-registered. If you want to leave your name standing, well then you just need to let that let us know. I think most people want to leave their name standing just for future services, so we'll just assume that you're coming every week. Just make it simple. Um, and you'll do basically what we've done before. Uh, do the health check, sanitize, mass, and this will be in place 
basically until we get the okay that we can remove one if all of the restrictions. By September, these should be gone. Hopefully all, all these things will be gone by the beginning of September. Um, so a note on the Bible studies, because we can get some people in the building now. Um, if you're coming to the Sunday morning Bible study, we can have up to five people in a room at one time. That's not a worship service, at least for now, uh, the next couple of weeks. So if you'd like to come, uh, I'll meet you up here. And if we have only five people, then we can go downstairs and, and have it uh, down in that room. But uh, we will have uh, in-person Bible studies here month, uh, Sunday, and I will still have an online component for anyone who wants to join those online. Um, time for what? Oh, 9.15. Um, uh, the Tuesday morning Bible study. If you'd like to come for that, please do. But since, again, we can only have five people in, in a room at one time, at least for the next few weeks, um, please allow those who want to come to a Bible study but don't have the ability to, to use uh, technology, allow them to come in. So this will be in person and online. So if you have the ability to join online for the Tuesday morning one, please join online. But this doesn't work for the Sunday morning. That's why they're different. Um, are there any other announcements? Seeing none. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.